What is going on crypto traders? It's John Doe here with the BitBuy video series. In the last video, we covered technical analysis for beginners. And if you already watched that video or if you already know a little bit about technical analysis, well, guess what? In today's video, we're going to cover a little bit more advanced technical analysis so we can dive a little bit deeper into the BitBuy Pro Trade platform. Hopefully by the end of this video, I can help you out. Technical analysis is something majority of traders use when trading crypto. It is key to help you know support and resistance levels, oversold and overbought ranges, uh, when to take profit, when the market uh, sentiment shifts from bullish to bearish or from bearish to bullish and so on. And guess what? With the right technical analysis and risk management, the more you learn, the more experience you get, the better of a trader you will become. So I'm gonna need your attention in this video. You already understand the basics of technical analysis. Let's talk a little bit more about the advanced things. So here we are on the first topic, and that is setting orders and entries on your positions. So here on the BitBuy Pro Trade, we look here on the top left where it says new orders. This is where you set your orders. You have the option of a limit order and as well as a market order. Usually most of you using the BitBuy platform will use market orders. And that's when you enter a position where you buy a cryptocurrency at the current market price. Now for something that's a little bit more advanced, we'll take a look at a limit order. That is when you place a bid lower than the current price for when you are looking to buy Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency you are looking at. Or you can also set a ask price uh, to sell it later on at a higher price. Now on a BitBuy Pro Trade, it is pretty easy. As you can see right here, you enter the price, uh, the amount of Bitcoin, or you can go based on percentage of your portfolio. And then you can, it shows you your available balance and then you click buy. So for example here, let's say I want to buy some Bitcoin if price comes down towards this $48,000 level. So what I would do is enter 48,000 here. Let's say I want to use half of my account balance. Let's go with 50% right here. And then you simply click buy and your order will be placed. And as you can see right here under my orders, it now shows the limit order that I just placed to buy some Bitcoin at $48,000. So now that I just showed you how to set those orders, now let's talk about how to use indicators to help you manage your positions and to help you find price levels to set orders at. So here I have an indicator loaded on my chart such as the RSI and I have two moving averages. Now let's make this a little bit bigger so you can have a better look at it here. So using indicators to help you manage your positions. If you look here at Bitcoin in November of 2021, you can see price did peak up here at about 82,000 Canadian. And since then, Bitcoin has been in a downtrend. And if we look at this RSI, Bitcoin did reach that overbought level and it did have a bearish divergence actually. And that is when price continued to push higher, but the RSI was losing momentum, which means we are looking for some type of rejection around these levels. Now, how do you use indicators to help you look for where to sell or where to make those uh, bids? Pairing moving averages with something like an RSI or anything that can help you see momentum can be a lot of help once you do understand how both work independently. So RSI, you look for divergences and price trending in overbought and oversold levels. And price action with these moving averages, you look for moving average crossovers. And another thing you look for is how much price is extending from a moving average um, after momentum has kicked off. For example, back here before we had that run to all time highs for Bitcoin, Bitcoin was moving sideways for a bit and the RSI was down towards oversold and it made a higher low and it showed some bullish momentum coming in and price was consolidating sideways which we got a nice divergence and price broke up above these moving averages. And as well as the RSI went above that 50 level, which meant some bullish momentum is coming in. And that was an entry right there to enter your position on Bitcoin. Now looking here at today, how does things look here at this RSI and the price action? The lowest levels of the RSI were back here where it reached down towards that 30 level. But now if we look at price, it's still around that same range 
but the RSI is higher up, indicating that the selling pressure is actually losing momentum. So the longer we consolidate sideways here, selling pressure will continue to lose momentum and you need to look for a moving average crossover of the 50 and the 20 for a next entry for a next potential move up. So when I say using indicators to manage positions, I mean learning to understand how both work and using both to assist each other. If you just use moving average crossovers, they will give you entries for trades, but the timing could be off. As you can see, RSI could go down towards oversold, but it can continue trending down and oversold. And as well here, it went into overbought and it went down towards oversold, but price continued moving up. So if you do want to do a little bit more advanced technical analysis, then I do recommend using at least one momentum indicator as well as some type of indicator to give you uh, momentum on price actions or price patterns. And now let's talk about multi time frame analysis. That is when you look at two different time frames on your chart to look for that entry, whether to buy or sell Bitcoin. So let's say here we mainly trade this daily chart for the trend of Bitcoin to look for when we enter and we get a buy signal. But if you look on the lower time frame, let's say the four hour chart, it might show that Bitcoin is overbought and momentum is too high. Once you do get a buy signal on the daily chart, like this bullish crossover we had here on February 28th, always best to zoom into something lower time frame like the four hour chart. Have a look, see here on February 28th, as you can see, Bitcoin was overbought on this RSI and price was far extended by these four hour moving averages, which means the better entry wasn't actually at that crossover. It was when price retraced and retested those lows once again and price went back into oversold on that four hour chart and that gives you a much better entry uh, for Bitcoin. So if you are using indicators to help you manage to enter your positions, it is best to scale down a little bit sometimes to kind of see where momentum is at on a shorter time frame before you get your entry because the move always happens first on the shorter time frames and these longer time frames such as the daily or even the weekly chart they just give confirmation on which the uh, direction the overall trend should continue to go now the last thing we're talking about here is trading multiple crypto assets as you know there are thousands of cryptocurrencies and bitbuy does have the top ones available for trading as you can see here and some of you may want to trade multiple such as bitcoin uh, ethereum litecoin dogecoin so how do you do that always remember bitcoin is the main market mover meaning majority of the altcoins will not be what actually moves bitcoin but it all depends on the move that Bitcoin makes first before you see the altcoins move. That's why most traders will be more weighted in their portfolios in Bitcoin and then start to look at these higher risk assets uh, such as Dogecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, uh, Ethereum and much more. One thing to note here, Bitcoin the volatility is much lower than some altcoins. You can see here Bitcoin from these lows, it pushed up about 30%. Let's have a look here at something like Dogecoin. How did that move? Dogecoin reached the lows, but as you can see, price did move very different compared to Bitcoin. Dogecoin continued making yearly lows here on this daily chart. Clearly, the whole crypto market does not move together, but Bitcoin is the first mover of the crypto market. Now, let's look here at Ethereum. Very similar chart to how Bitcoin would move. And as you can see from these lows, Ethereum did bounce about 40, 45%. So if you are trading multiple crypto assets, you have to remember Bitcoin is the main one you need to watch first and then look at the other altcoins. And but also those are more volatile. So if you are highly exposed in those over Bitcoin, then you will see bigger swings in your portfolio balance. To avoid something like this, lower the weight of altcoins in your portfolio for a more stable portfolio growth as Bitcoin's price increases and the overall crypto market. So there you have it, my advanced version of technical analysis here on the BitBuy video series. I also did the beginner version, so if you haven't checked that out, make sure you do have a look at that on the channel as well. There's so much to cover when it comes to trading crypto, and there are a few things that I missed, but I hope in this video there was enough to help you out. And I could just be covering even more on more videos to come, so make sure you are following BitBuy for much more crypto content, and I'll see you next time.